Can you find Miami vibes in Ecuador? You sure can, it's real. Join me as I walk through Guayaquil's most dangerous malecón and reveal a side of the city you'd never expect. Malecon in Guayaquil, one of the most important spots for travelers or locals to come visit while they're here. And this is 2024 at a time when this is considered to be a dangerous city. I mean, I feel pretty safe. Gachinia, how are you feeling? Uh, well, some places start to feel a little bit unsafe, but not that much as they were describing it. So, like, I was super scared as well, but I don't feel, I feel there is a lot of police, they are kind of like taking care of the people. Um, I think what you're feeling is because it's a holiday. Right now is the independence of Guayaquil and there's not very many people here in the city. It feels empty, therefore you probably feel like a, a void. And I, I think that's what you're feeling. But here we are getting into just like a spot with Fridges and ovens for sale, <laughs> for whatever reason. We're just gonna bring our uh, bring all these ovens to the to the <laughs> malecon, and then these motorcycles as well for whatever reason. Ah, uh, because they have like a fair price. Is it a raffle? You think? Something like that. So it's like a fair price. Ah, oh, they're trying to sell stuff, discounted stuff. Big old fridge for four hundred sixty nine dollars. Oh, there's Popeye. Popeye, who's that? Popeye. Popeye. Who's the woman? It's uh, Betty, right? Olivia. Olivia? Yeah. Okay. So a little backstory about me and Guayaquil. I came here in 2019 and then 2020 um, on my first time in Ecuador. And I came here to Guayaquil and I came to this very malecon with my buddy uh, Matt, Matty B, Mr. Rojo King, so shout out to you, Matty. And here I am back in 2024, drove it all the way down from Minnesota. So, a little different experience. So far, Gajinia, what are your first impressions of the city? Is it as... Uh, maybe it, is it as developed as you were thinking? Is it like dirtier or cleaner than you were thinking? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, it's so definitely cleaner than Colombia, I think. Certain uh, parts. Certain parts. Well, cleaner than the coastal parts of Colombia. Medellin's a clean city. Yeah, but basically it's just Medellin. <laughs> <laughs> just Medellin, maybe. Is it developed? Like, I think it's more developed than, uh, I mean, I drove, we drove through the downtown and I thought, whoa, big skyscrapers and it looks nice. I mean, it's not as, like, elegantly developed as Carolina and Quito, which is actually a pretty nice part of Ecuador as well, in Quito. But yeah, I mean, I was a little bit surprised because we drove through that, what was it called? Uzdesa or whatever? Uzdesa? Urdesa? Urdesa. Urdesa. And it wasn't as good as I was expecting. I thought it would be kind of like a really elegant version of, or similar to La Carolina, but it wasn't. So anyways, here we are arriving to what is the one of the icons of the city, which is the Ferris wheel. <clears throat> and as you can see, going behind the Ferris wheel are these cable cars. Ah, the houses. And these colored houses are quite nice as well. 
Our buddy Jason told us that when there are colored houses in certain cities, it means that the city is kind of a liberal leaning type of city. Uh. And when they're not colored, when they're kind of more dark or just brown or black or just concrete, that they are more of a conservative type of city. So I'm, who knows if this is a liberal type of neighborhood like Jason said. By the way, check out Jason's video. He just released a video interviewing me in Spanish. Uh, and that was a really cool chat I had with Jason. What's his channel again? Jason? Jason Podcast. Jason Podcast. He just interviewed me and it's a long chat. But if you like practicing Spanish, you want to hear my Spanish, which is not great, <laughs> but it's good enough. You can check that out in the description in the link. Here we got it. Here's a safari. Looks like we have a beer club. I think this is where I had beer with Maddie <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> It's so hot here. <laughs> Humidity is so high. We're looking out at the river right here. It seems like this is one of the areas where you can po possibly take the cable car is up there. And this is kind of the edge of this kind of seems like a children's park, a children's entertainment area. What do you think about Guayaquil in 2024? Do you think it looks pretty dangerous from a little walk around here? Of course, there's going to be dangerous parts in every city, but so far we've been in a pretty decent, pretty regular places, and that's just how it is. 2024, Guayaquil, check out this river. Oh, would you look at that? Looks like I just found the Calle La in Guatemala City of Ecuador. It's called Plaza Lagos in Guayaquil. It's in the very luxurious neighborhood of what's it called? San, San Bondro Mono Mono or something? I'm not even sure what it's called but this is definitely a, a little piece of the United States you could say or the Miami of <laughs> Ecuador here in this area of the city in the largest city of Ecuador. This is very very similar to Cayala. Like white colored like archways with lots of structures that are very nice. I don't remember seeing as many lakes and, and water areas in Cayala, but this definitely is the reason why it's called Plaza Lagos here. It has the lake in the middle of this. It seems like a residential mixed with commercial type of, of blend of, of business and living for seems like the high net worth people, the high income type of people. When I first got here to Ecuador, I thought, man, this, there's a lot of similarities between Ecuador and Guatemala. I just left Colombia and then I just saw that there's, you know, from a lot of diversity to a lot more uh, indigenous and kind of traditional type of values. And that's kind of how I feel from Colombia to Ecuador, same way I felt Mexico to Guatemala. Mexico to Guatemala, uh, okay, well, this is a kind of a cool, like, cultural, more native, indigenous type of experience. That's what I feel here in Ecuador. And coming here, it's just like a blast from the past, thinking, oh, wow, this is kind of like my Cayala experience, but in Ecuador. And the similarities between the two countries, it's kind of crazy. I mean, pretty crazy. Here's Natalie. She's the reason why we're here. She's so happy to be in the luxury of Plaza Lagos. She's looking for a place to drink some Tinto, is that right? Yeah. Where are we going to drink some coffee? Maybe a sweet and coffee again. <laughs> Where is the sweet and coffee? Is there one? Let's go. Plaza Lagos Town Center. Yeah. The lake, lake, plaza or lake center, lake square. And here we get yeah, like to an area which is beautiful palm trees and this is probably what 
Natalie wanted to do with the Isla Santai. She wanted to turn Isla Santai into something like this. That was her, her grand capitalist no, no, idea. Fine. Her capitalist idea of we could take all these palm trees and convert it into a Plaza Lagos. <laughs> it's fine. Now we have Plaza Lagos. Now we don't have to move the community. Ah, okay. So we don't. We can leave the the aldea and the people living there. They don't have to come over here. They can stay there. Natalie found her little piece of paradise here in Ecuador in Guayaquil. So here's one of the coffee shops Natalie loves about Ecuador, the sweet and coffee. And it seems like a lot of places in this area it has just tiny billboards in front of the businesses. You can't really tell what they actually are from far away. I mean, from here to over there, you have no idea what they are. They have the arches, there's no billboards, there's no signs. But once you cross going into the area, then then you can see. Oh, okay. So here's a billboard for this. Here's Dorvetti. Here's Dorvet, whatever it is. Here's Plaza Lagos. Something here. I think almost it looks like a bookstore. I don't, I don't know what this is. There's some restaurants, some other restaurants. I just keep on stretch, stretching on and on and on. This is all you can have here in front of your, your shop. Definitely a strange place here. I'm definitely <laughs> feeling like that's an interesting statue. Looks like they're constructing over there across the way. And this is one of the uh, bridges over this constructed lake here. All right, so this is the area. Here's Rachinha. Looks like there's some residential buildings mostly. I don't see much for business. I mean, at least towards the lakeside. But this is definitely a very beautiful area. Mostly over there, it seems to be residential. We drove over to one of these areas and it was residential, yeah. What do you think about here? What do you think about this Plaza Lagos? Would you come to live here? Do you think this would be the spot to live? I mean, on a sunny day, it's very hot here. I mean, it's probably 90 degrees because the humidity is high and very clear. There's a clear sky day, which this is probably the first time we've been in Guayaquil with nice weather. <laughs> what do you think about this spot? Very nice. But, I mean, like, it's surprising because we're so much told not to come because it's so dangerous. And then you find all of the security here. There's <laughs> Looking what you're doing, where are you going? Almost more security than, than customers, it seems <laughs> like. There's just so many securities and they're all like, hey, don't stop recording. And I'm like, well, I just want to show a little bit of this and that, you know. So anyways, this is uh, Plaza Lagos, an interesting spot of the probably the upper class, the upper income bracket here in Guayaquil and most of Ecuador, I would assume. And uh, yeah, this is a spot that's just like the Cayala of Guatemala, Guatemala City. Here is my two cents on the issue. Uh, there are certain areas that people like to live in in Latin America to kind of separate yourselves from the local lifestyle. And that's usually like the enclave style of living. And that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. If you want to bring your money over here and live in a beautiful place in Guayaquil, definitely. That's an awesome option and do it if that's right for you. But this is an area that if you're really not interested in the Ecuadorian culture, then that's probably the place to come up if you just want to park your cash and live uh, in a lower cost country, even though this is kind of a higher cost area of a low cost country. Maybe talking to, uh, about other cities, yeah, maybe you can live um, within the community, for example, in La Carolina. Carolina is kind of in the middle of the city with the same type of like nice luxury feel but it doesn't have the excluded, I'm on the outskirts or I'm in my bubble trying to exclude everyone else. It has a huge park in the very middle. It's not a private community. So this is kind of like the Guayaquil enclave of people that want to maybe park a ton of cash and live in a, in a cool, uh, maybe up and coming country and or part of the city, biggest city in the country in Ecuador. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of my two cents on if you want to live in this type of uh, environment, well, as you can see, this is an area that kind of reminds me of like an American, little mini America in Ecuador. You can find those in a lot of countries anyways. For example, maybe Cayala is that example in Guatemala. However, that's just my idea and two cents on it.